TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The IDF announces that Hamas has essentially lost control of the northern Gaza Strip. Jerusalem reiterates that it would not accept any cessation of hostilities unless Hamas releases its hostages. French President Emmanuel Macron hosts 80 nations and institutions to coordinate a response for Gaza. As Israel entered into the 34th day of war, since the Islamist terror operatives from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip launched a brutal onslaught on southern Israel in less than two weeks after the IDF launched a ground offensive on the northern part of the terror-infested enclave, the IDF has announced that Hamas has effectively lost control. Consequently, thousands of Gazan civilians have seized the opportunity to flee to the humanitarian safe zone in the southern part of the enclave. Today we saw 50,000 Gazans move from the northern Gaza Strip to the south. They are moving because they understand that Hamas has lost control in the north and that the south is safer. A safer area where they receive medicine, water and food. They understand it's an improvement. We will continue to facilitate the flow of humanitarian aid to the south. We will continue to allow, tomorrow, Gaza residents to move from the clutches of Hamas in the northern Gaza Strip to the southern Gaza Strip. Hamas has lost control and is continuing to lose control in the north. Admiral Hagari went on to assert unequivocally that in spite of extensive international efforts to force a cessation of hostilities upon Israel, there is no ceasefire. End of Sakatish. There is no ceasefire. So that you hear it, there is no ceasefire. We are at war with Hamas. There's no ceasefire. The public under Hamas is fleeing south because they understand that Hamas is using them as human shields. What does exist? There are humanitarian pauses. These pauses, humanitarian, for specific times, afford the population the chance to organize and move south for its security. And we want the population to move south to a place more secure and remain in a place more secure in the south. We are not at war with the population of Gaza. We are at war with Hamas, who is holding our people hostage, who committed the murderous attack of October 7th. That's what we're at war with. And that's where we have to distinguish between the population of Gaza that knows that Hamas has abandoned it, who we are allowing to reach a more secure area, and we are providing in those areas medicine, water, food, with the assistance of Egypt and the United States. It is important to highlight that the IDF has seized control of extensive parts of the northern Gaza Strip, where the extent of war crimes in relation to Hamas's deliberate use of civilians within its terror infrastructure was displayed for the world to see, including weapons manufacturing sites that were deliberately situated adjacent to bedrooms of children, among other heinous crimes. Gaza is the biggest terror base ever built by mankind. This whole city is one big terror base. Underground kilometers of tunnels that connect to hospitals and schools connect to each other. They include communication rooms, ammunition storages, places to sleep and all of it in order to act as a basis of terror from which they can hurt the citizens of Israel and IDF soldiers. It is important to know that three armor divisions are making concrete strides forward on the Hamas stronghold in Gaza City, where the Islamist group's leadership is hiding underground in a location underneath the Shifa hospital. And while Jerusalem's directives to eliminate Hamas's murderous leadership remains in effect, the ISA is closely monitoring their every movement since Hamas is utilizing all humanitarian ploys to its advantage, as can be heard in the following recording. <laughs> No, I'm not going to go to the house. 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 I'm not going to go to the house
واذا اذا مش قادر تحرك السياره وفيش عندك ساعات تكلمني على البدر عشان ابعت لك لا يا رامز اذا صبح بطلع ما عندي ساعات يا زلمه يعني بطلع لساعات اتحرك وبيجي Well, the IDF is chiefly focused on Israel's southern battlefront. It is also operating extensively throughout Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley, as well as the northern front vis-a-vis -vis the Lebanese Iranian proxy Hezbollah. In the former territories, IDF, ISA, and Border Police Special Operators conducted extensive counter-terror activity throughout the so-called West Bank, eliminating at least eight terror operatives and apprehending over two dozen of others. Separately, in Lebanon, Hezbollah terror cells attempted to launch a number of anti-tank missiles at IDF positions. However, IDF intelligence gathering units noticed their movement and neutralized a number of the terrorists. And while prospects of miscalculation are at an all-time high, Jerusalem's top defense officials stressed that Israel does not seek war with Lebanon. We are fighting off each attack. There are around 70 Hezbollah fighters have been killed so far. We will continue this way. If they make a mistake and drag Lebanon into a war, they will pay a very heavy price. We have no interest in having a war against Hezbollah. Yehyat al war made a mistake and dragged Hamas into a war. The result is the destruction of Gaza and the Hamas organization. If Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah makes a mistake, he will seal Lebanon's fate. Meanwhile, during a Jerusalem War Cabinet meeting, which included chairmen of Israeli communities throughout Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu initially commended the IDF, alongside other security agencies, for their impressive success rate in the war against terror groups in Gaza while reiterating further that Jerusalem will not accept any ceasefire without the release of hostages that are currently being held by Hamas. At the start of my remarks, I would like to commend the IDF ground action in the Gaza Strip. It is advancing well and is achieving good results. I would like to set aside all kinds of false rumors that we are hearing from all sorts of directions and re-clarify one thing, there will be no ceasefire without the release of our hostages. Everything else is false. Netanyahu went on to address three points which the war cabinet was due to discuss. I am here with the War Cabinet, the Council Heads from Judea and Samaria, and, of course, with IDF Central Command. We have come here to accomplish three goals. The first goal is to step up counterterrorism, which is being done aggressively. I would like to commend the IDF, the ISA, and Israel Police for their very impressive action in this field. The second objective is to prevent escalation and Judea and Samaria from becoming a second front. Of course, this requires preparing for large-scale attacks both in Judea and Samaria, and also from Judea and Samaria. The third point relates to a group of radical extremists who are known to be affiliated to National Security Ministry Tamal Ben-Gvir, and who've been labeled by the ISA and IDF on a number of occasions as Jewish terrorists who engage in harmful behavior against Palestinian civilians throughout the so-called West Bank. Uh, there are half a million loyal, law-abiding residents in Judea and Samaria who do dedicated work. Now, many of them are either career IDF officers or reservists on the front line in Gaza. These citizens have contributed greatly to the state of Israel over the years and are meeting challenges that the citizens of Israel know are both difficult and obligatory. They have consistently upheld ethical values and norms of conduct of the highest order. There is a tiny handful of people that do not represent this public and that take the law into their own hands. We are not prepared to tolerate this. We are not prepared to accept this. We will take all action against them. This causes severe international damage to the state of Israel and it does not represent the public here. I condemn it and we will act against it. And I know that I represent all of the people sitting here, the heads of the communities in Judea and Samaria and the residents of Judea and Samaria. Meanwhile, international efforts to realize a tactical pause are ratcheting up. France hosted 80 separate countries and major institutions for a conference 
focused on a humanitarian response to the situation in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. And while French President Emmanuel Macron said that Paris coordinates its every move with Jerusalem, Israel, in contrast to the Palestinian Authority, was not invited to participate at the conference. Today, the situation is grave and is getting worse each day. In the short term, we should work on protecting civilians, and to do so, we need a humanitarian pause very quickly and we have to strive for a ceasefire, this should become a possibility. We share values and have common commitments that bring us here today, and in line with Israeli and Palestinian authorities, we worry about the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Civilians must be protected, that's absolutely indispensable. This is non-negotiable, this is an immediate necessity. And in the long term, that is also even a condition for us to effectively fight against terrorists. When they attacked Israel, Hamas took the responsibility to expose Palestinians to terrible consequences. Today, it's the civilians of Gaza who are suffering. Nearly 1.5 million people are displaced, thousands have died or have been injured. And now the sorrow of Palestinians adds to the sorrow of Israelis, and we cannot come to terms with it, because every life is valuable and because, for us who promote universal humanist values, there is no double standard. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, I'd like to once again thank all of you who stand by TV7 Israel by supporting us with both donations and prayer. Since TV7 Israel is 100% donation-based, without your support, we won't be able to produce any of our daily updates. Therefore, I would like to reiterate our accumulating needs and encourage you, if you're blessed by our productions and are able, please consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again on our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.